my name is Chris. I am a developer advocate at Amazon Web Services, uh, perpetual be beginner uh, to just about everything I do. So I'm always trying to learn and um, really excited to talk about what we're going to be talking about today, which is building a REST API with AWS Chalice using AWS Open Datasets. Uh, I've put my Twitter handle on uh, all of the slides. So if you've got any questions for me, uh, feel free to hit me up here uh, in Remo or on Twitter. Either way, uh, happy to do it. So what are we going to cover over the next 10 minutes um, or 10 to 15 minutes? Well, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to break it down for us. So the first thing that I think I want us to take a step back is really just understand what a REST API is. Some of us may be super familiar with it and have tons of experience. And some of us, like you know, I have done in the past, you kind of just come into a technology and you try and pick it up really quickly. So hopefully I can give you the 30,000 foot overview and then we'll dive right into how you would uh, do this with AWS and uh, our tooling. So um, we'll give you a supersonic introduction to some of the concepts that we're going to be covering today, which are AWS open data sets and AWS Chalice. And then let's really dig into the code, right? You know, that's why we're all here. We want to actually see how this works. And then we'll show how we'll implement that uh, RESTful API with those two services. And then uh, we'll take, I'll have questions uh, for the last, uh, you know, four to five minutes. So when I was coming, uh, when I was putting the slide together, I was trying to figure out like a good, um, image for like a REST API. And unfortunately, just a lot of the stock photos I was finding uh, didn't really make a lot of sense for the presentation I wanted to give. So I figured a dog was the best way to do it. But what is a REST API, right? What do I use them for? Uh, the traditional definition, if you look up on w Wikipedia or if you just type in what is REST, uh, what it is, is uh, it stands for represent representational state transfer, right? But what does that mean, right? If I understand like, you know, a trans, if I understand like what state is and I understand that I'm transferring things, what does that actually mean from like a, like a fundamental like day-to-day -day perspective as a developer? Uh, the best way that I like to think about it is that REST and the APIs that you're building to essentially are a common uh, framework and understanding between folks on communicating data back and forth over H HTTP. Right, so when we think about what we're trying to send, you know, it's, it can be any kind of data, right? And we tend to divide those operations up into a common framework known as CRUD or CRUD, right? So when we're sending data back and forth, we're either creating data, we're reading data, we're updating data, or we're deleting some kind of data. Uh, the data itself is not uh, uh, relevant yet. So that's great, but you know, what, what are some specific ex examples of APIs, right? You know, if we think about it from like a RESTful state, I think the, the most common one that I use on a day-to-day -day basis is the GitHub API, right? Um, you have an API token, uh, you can query data through its endpoints, and it's returning data about many different things to me. It can be an XML format, it's JSON, so on and so forth. You have other types of APIs that will allow you to, uh, you know, abstract away uh, those endpoints. So, you know, for example, uh, with GitHub, you have that basic REST API, but then there are wrappers like uh, the GitHub 3 um, module and library that's written in Python. Or for example, with uh, AWS, you have things like Bot03, which are uh, uh, an API programming interface uh, for, for Python for the AWS APIs. Great. So we have an idea of what we're talking about with REST APIs, which is at the end of the day, just putting data back and forth from one place to another. So now what are, what are we thinking about next, right? We're talking about AWS open data sets, right? Um, these are really awesome. And they're, uh, they are a great to showcase like how you can build a REST API. So what these are, are essentially just uh, free, majority of these are essentially free open data sets that you can like download uh, to your own like local uh, uh, machine and just work with them. Massive data sets. Uh, I, when I first like saw them, I was just blown away with how cool they were. Uh, there's weather data, there's medical data, there's city data, there's satellite imagery, all sorts of really cool data. Uh, for the specific uh, part of this talk, we're going to be focusing on a data set that includes like New York City taxi data. 
Um, the really awesome thing about all these open data sets is AWS hosts the platform, but it, uh, all of these data sets are maintained by the community. And uh, like I said before, the majority, is, majority of these are free to download. All you really need access to is uh, either a web browser or using something like the AWS uh, uh, command line interface, and you can interact and download these uh, data sets uh, really quickly. Awesome. So we understand what uh, REST APIs are. We understand what um, open data sets are. And now what's Chalice? So Chalice is a uh, serverless micro framework for AWS to specifically deploy and maintain certain types of serverless applications, including REST APIs. Um, there are other things that it works with, but for the, uh, for the, uh, for the simplicity of this talk, we're going to focus on specifically deploying REST APIs. If you've ever used Flask, and I'm sure a lot of us have, the ma I'm hoping the majority of us have in this room, um, it looks very similar and deploys very similar similarly to that, um, and integrates all over all over the place. Great. So I've talked about these high concepts. I've got about five minutes left, right? Let's kind of just jump into it. Can I, can we actually see some code, right? So installing Chalice is really simple and straightforward. It's available via pip. It's supported with uh, you know, the latest versions of Python. I just tested it with 3.3.8 this morning. I'm going to be uh, testing it with 3.9 later uh, this week. Um, but essentially, what it, what it is is just a module that lives inside uh, or that is downloaded from pip, and essentially uh, not only gives you access to the uh, the pip libraries itself, but also gives you access to the Chalice uh, command line interface. So once you install it on your local machine. Essentially, what you're doing is creating a Chalice, Chalice project with the CLI. So at the bottom of the screen there, you essentially create a new project with Chalice, the project name, I'm sorry, Chalice new project, and then your project name. And then what Chalice is doing for you is scaffolding uh, a couple of different files, your application.py, and then the requirements for your application. You can do all of your de development locally. You don't even have to touch AWS until you're ready to deploy. And then part of that scaffolding to get you up and running very quickly is uh, importing your Chalice object and then creating a very basic route. Again, when I said it looks very similar to Flask, well, there you go. You've got uh, an app. You've got a routing application decorator based on the route that you want to go to, and essentially you're returning uh, 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 plain text data back and forth. So this is a little bit different than Flask in that you won't be necessarily uh, returning like HTML data. More often than not, you'll be returning either some sort of like uh, 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 plain text data that might be read by another service. When you actually go to deploy, Chalice is taking care of a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the hard work that takes to uh, deploy resources, right? So things like your IAM roles, creating Lambda functions, and we'll, and, uh, we'll automatically deploy those resources for you. And then once it's ready to go, you have a, uh, you can essentially hit your uh, endpoint and then you've got data returned. So what did we do here? We deployed a Chalice application. We deployed an API gateway instance that was automatically provisioned for us and uh, gave us an AWS Lambda instance. But wait a minute, wasn't this a lightning talk about building our own REST API with an open data set? Yes. So what we're gonna go do here really quickly in the next few couple minutes is we're gonna download a data uh, set from open data set with AWS S3. We're gonna uh, basically run that uh, through uh, AWS Glue and we're going to query that data with AWS Athena. So what does that actually mean? So I go into the registry, I go into our, uh, our data set, I download it, I run it into an ETL uh, backend that we have called AWS Glue. I create a, uh, a name for it called data sets. And then within Athena, and I'll explain what that is very quickly, um, it allows us to uh, query uh, flat data or any data that's just sitting within an, uh, within an S3 bucket. So don't have to like spin up a database, uh, but we can use a uh, very simple, or we can use SQL as we would before. So we're not necessarily dynamically building our data set with Chalice, but we are uh, accessing it uh, with that. So what are we actually doing in Chalice? Well, in Chalice, what we're uh, essentially doing is essentially just creating six functions. We're gonna create our CRUD operations, which is our create, read, update, and delete. And then we're gonna create two basic functions that query our data in Athena that we've downloaded to an S3 bucket. So essentially what we're doing here is we create a function called query, query execution. 
and get our query results. That sounds vague, but essentially what we're doing is we're telling uh, Botto3, I'm sorry, we're telling AWS that when we have a request coming into our API, um, whether it's a create, read, update, or delete, we want to execute some specific SQL query, and we want to read the contents of that data, and then we want to either provide that back to the user or make an action on behalf of that user. The nice thing about this is we're separating our SQL queries and our, all of our data separate from the app. And then when we're actually building the, uh, the, uh, the REST API, essentially we can just do it by the individual route. So again, very similar to Flask, I create uh, four functions. I've got a get function, a create function, an update, and a delete. And all I have to do is uh, provide uh, the parameter uh, that I want to from the route, and then I'm, I'm good to go. So then in the get uh, uh, function, essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, give me the last 10 instances or the last 10 rows of my flat file, which is uh, a file containing uh, New York City taxi rides for a given uh, time period. And essentially once uh, I have that up and running and I run my chalice deploy, uh, I can essentially query that, that and I can provide flat data back to an end user. So this is really handy. So when we think about, you know, what, you know, in a real world scenario, what this might look like, you know, you might have be in a situation where you work in, a, in a, you know, you might be part of a development group that is providing, you know, business logic and applications and data to uh, another, um, another team or group within your organization. And so using something like AWS Chalice allows you to do this very rapidly and at minimal cost. Um, so I think it's one of the coolest things. Um, that I've come across at AWS and I, I just, I really love talking about it. <laughs>